But it is interesting to note that uh, $2.4 million was, was awarded uh, for exploring the feasibility of the use of mushroom extracts as immunomodulating uh, agents. And in this clinical uh, trial, phase two clinical randomized placebo controlled trial, uh, they were women with early stage breast cancer who completed adjuvant radiation therapy. And what the, the, the outcome that they were looking for is after radiation or chemo, does, does, the, does the turkey tail um, help protect the immune, immune response, the immune system from the, the um, harmful effects of radiation or chemotherapy? And they found out, the initial study found out that, it, that they did, and not only that, but self-reported uh, quality of life scores and fatigue scores were higher with the mushroom extract. So this is the first study that's been done in, in, in the U.S. And because of the, the um, positive outcome, they funded another round of studies now that they're going to be look at long -term, looking at long-term survivability. Uh, so that's going to be very interesting when that comes out. If that turns out, and I actually heard from one of the researchers that it seems to be po going in a positive direction. So th that's pretty exciting. When that hits the news, that's going to really maybe increase sales of mushroom products by quite a bit. Um, so th there's more immune uh, clinical trials here. I've, I'm mentioning more studies. A positive impact on clinical outcomes. That's what I wanted to mention. But uh, you can read all these uh, details here. Uh, clinical indication of PSK and PSP. Some of the types of cancers that's been studied for also Fewer outbreaks of genital herpes, increased cellular immunity. Uh, also, most mushrooms have a, a cholesterol regulating effect, especially shiitake and, and oyster mushrooms, pleurotus, have, an, have a cholesterol regulating effect. So in eating shiitake regularly, you're going to get, a, and I always say, instead of side effects, like from statins, you're going to get side benefits. So eating mushrooms, you're going to get this the for, uh, for immunomodulation, you're going to get the side benefit of cholesterol regulation as well. Uh, dose three to six grams orally, you can buy it as a Chinese herb, toxicity low, negative results on uh, AIMS and chromosome distortion tests. In other words, it's not mutagenic, which one wouldn't expect. Shiitake is another very popular <coughs> herb that's widely used, second most widely cultivated mushroom in the world and second most amount of published scientific studies. There's lots of science on it. Beautiful, delicious mushroom. Jim Duke, um, one of my favorite herbalists, uh, told me one time or mentioned one time, I'd rather enjoy my medicine. So th this is an example of you know cooking the shiitake, eating it, enjoying it, and you're getting your medicine at the same time. So you can't beat that. Some of the biological effects, am, immunomodulating, anti-tumor, anti-carcinogenic, antiviral, hepatoprotective, anti-ulcerogenic, and anti-cholesterolemic. So it does have a variety of biological activities that it's been uh, studied for. However, again, we don't have the clinical studies. We don't have the clinical studies on some of these things like hepatoprotective and, uh, and preventing ulcers and so forth. Uh, numerous Chinese-Japanese clinical trials with Lentinus adotes mycelium extract. That's LEM. So LEM is, an, is kind of like PSK. It's the PSK of shiitake. It's a crude extract of uh, shiitake mycelium grown in, in culture. Um, the five-year survival rate is up to 30% higher with LEM over placebo. So that's, that's definitely uh, significant. Uh, increased survival times for patients with inoperable gastric cancer and breast cancer with lentinin. However, lentinin is injected. LEM is oral. Some of the other indications for HIV AIDS, hepatitis. This uh, shiitake extract was um, my basic protocol for I, when I uh, was in Santa Cruz and practicing. I, I specialized in hepatitis C and wrote a book on it, uh, on liver health. 
because I had hepatitis myself from traveling abroad in the early days, it was infectious hepatitis. And um, I, at one point I had over 100 patients with hepatitis C that I was working with, and sh uh, shiitake was, was one of the foundational remedies that I gave most everybody as just as, as an immunomodulator. Uh, also, chronic, it's, it has anti-cholesterol or cholesterol-lowering compounds in it called aradidine. Uh, so, so it's a good it's a good thing to add to the diet just for cholesterol regulation, um, blood lipid health, chronic fatigue, viral syndromes, immune suppression, infectious diseases. Now on to Ganoderma. Rishi is such an incredible herb. This picture you see is was taken in the Amazon. These kind of antler form. This is not Ganoderma lingure or lucidum. Um, one thing I wanted to mention at this point is that, you know, Ganoderma lucidum has always, or for a long time, been the scientific name associated with the mushroom we call reishi, or in China, lingzhur. But it turns out that, no, uh, it, the, uh, the name Ganoderma lucidum has to go with the European uh, species because Linnaeus first named it in the in the 1700s so that takes precedence and it turns out a lot of the research out there on Ganoderma lucidum now it's no longer Ganoderma lucidum they're calling the common reishi that grows in Asia uh, they're calling it Ganoderma lingzhur so the, the name has been officially changed now of, of the reishi or the the uh, lingzhur to Ganoderma lingzhur and uh, that's, uh, you can go on PubMed and you can read more studies on that. Here's a phylogeny showing some of the work that's been done. I'm not going to spend a long time with this, but it's showing that Ganoderma oregonense and Sugi and Lucidum, the European one, uh, well, actually this one, this is a study, they, this was still the, the Asian uh, ones, I guess. It's in the same clade. So you see Ganoderma oregonense and Ganoderma sugi, which are two reishi-like mushrooms that grow in North America. I collect them myself. Uh, those are very closely related to the, the traditional classic reishi. So people often ask me, well, can I collect Ganoderma sugi from hemlocks in the, in the U.S., and is that going to be the same as reishi? Well, it's very similar. The chemistry is quite similar in the triterpene tro profile and so forth, and they are very closely related. Now, there are some that are more distantly re related. These are the, um, well, here's, uh, Cecily is, is the one that now that they're calling the, the reishi-like mushroom uh, in, in the U.S. Anyway, this is just one. There are several other phylogenies available out there that are quite interesting. You can look those up on the web. Biological effects that have been shown in in vitro and in vivo studies, all kinds of things. It's used for, anal in, in, in China, it's used for so many clinical things as an analgesic, as an antihistamine, an anti-allergic uh, agent, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, direct antibacterial, uh, antioxidant, uh, and on and on and on. Uh, all these different uh, types of immunostimulating effects cardiotonic, so it's often recommended for, for uh, protecting the heart and cardiovascular system or even treating uh, in China. Central depressant effects, so it does have some calming effects, which are very, very evident. Like if you take a red reishi, that's the one to use for, for chronic um, anxiety, chronic sleeping problems, insomnia, is the red reishi. So you can buy red reishi and boil it down and make your own extract. Uh, and that's, that's a dried tea. And by the way, uh, that, the, the way to do that is in my new book, which is called Grow It and Heal It from Rodale Press. Grow It and Heal It from Rodale Press. I show how to make a dried tea extract uh, at home or for the clinic. I show that step by step with pictures and, and, and description of how to do it. But you basically boil the mushrooms down like the red reishi. You, you press the liquid out of the fruiting bodies at a carrier like like sulcaflock, which is cellulose, or maltodextrin is widely used. Remember to get non-GMO maltodextrin from cassava, because most of it's from corn, it's GMO. Uh, so you use a, mix a carrier in there, that absorbs the tea concentrate, then you pour it into a food dehydrator, the fruit leather trays, and you dehydrate it, 
and you take that dried wafer and powder it, and you have a four or a five to one extract, meaning that one part of that extract that you made, the dried tea concentrate, one part of that tea concentrate has all the goodies and, and active ingredients of five parts of the mushroom. So it's a way to make it more digestible, more bioavailable, preserve it, and make it a lot more concentrated is by making a dried tea. And you can do that uh, really easily just with a pot and a blender and, and a food dehydrator. Uh, so, and again, that's all listed in my book. Hepatoprotective, that's another um, thing that, that Rishi has utilized for often in, in China. Uh, also supporting adrenal function, hepatoprotective, protection against ionizing radiation. They gave, uh, they, they used uh, Rishi extracts after Chernobyl, uh, I read in one report or in Russia and anti-ulcer. So there are all these biological effects that have been proven from in vitro and in vivo studies, but we don't have any clinical trials yet. But, but also you look at the traditional use and blend it with some of these biological activities, and that's what they're doing in China. They're using them clinically uh, very frequently. Uh, clinical indications here, the often anti-aging, antioxidant effect, uh, adjuvant for cancer treatments, obviously. Nervous system disorders like neurasthenia, dizziness, insomnia. Shen disturbance like dream disturbed sleep. If, if you're under great stress, perhaps. Again, chronic insomnia and, and, uh, and nervousness and anxiety. All of these things Rishi works magnificently for and that's, that's really what I've used them for a lot in my clinic. It was one of my top prescribed herbs. Also for chronic allergic rhinitis, uh, bronchitis and other upper respiratory tract uh, infections. I know a number of uh, European docs who use uh, Rishi. Who I went to the mushroom conference and they told me we've got great luck with Rishi extract for chronic allergic rhinitis and, and other respiratory tract conditions. So uh, this is well vetted and it was also mentioned in the ancient literature in the Pen Sao. You can read about how it was used for respiratory tract conditions. Also, duodenal ulcers maybe is an anti-inflammatory. Blood sugar regulating, which a number of mushrooms have blood sugar regulating properties for metabolic syndrome. And hepatitis is a hepatoprotective. Okay, this is some Chinese, um, you can read this on, on your own. The, the dose, typically the traditional dose, is um, three to 15 grams for decoctions. Okay, artist conch, beautiful picture here. Ganoderma aplanatum, I just picked a bunch of that in the North Woods uh, recently. This is great to brew up. This uh, Ganoderma aplanatum, the artist conch, grows all over the world. It's widely available in North America, and it can be used very similarly to reishi. It does have triterpenes in it. It has many of the same effects as reishi, though I wouldn't say it's the same. I would say that it has many of the same effects as Rishi, as a hepatoprotective it has been. And it is used in China, and if you buy sometimes Rishi extracts, I've noted that they blend sometimes Ganoderma aplanatum into them. A lot of biological effects again. There's the black uh, Rishi, Ganoderma sinensi, which is, according to Chinese medicine, the black would go more towards the kidneys. So that's more useful possibly for hormonal imbalances and so forth. But that's also the black one. But the red one really is the one to use for neurological conditions and so forth. Here is Ganoderma sugi. This is a 17 pound Ganoderma sugi. Sugi, as I showed you in the phylogeny, this uh, Ganoderma sugi, which grows on hemlocks, is very closely related to reishi and can be used as a substitute. I pick this all the time in the Sierra it's growing widespread on the East Coast, uh, but it doesn't look like this in the East Coast. It tends to be smaller and has a little stem on it. Uh, but I saw a lot, in, uh, a lot of it in uh, it, it medicines from the earth. We were picking quite a bit of it in North Carolina uh, th uh, this year. And uh, so you can find a lot of Ganoderma sugi around and, and uh, use it pretty similarly to Rishi. Close up, beautiful mushroom, one of the most beautiful mushrooms I had ever seen. And there is some studies on it showing anti-tumor effects. There's Ganoderma curtisii, 
which also is very closely related to the classic Rishi, which grows in the southeastern United States. It has that kind of yellowish cap, but still varnished like a classic Rishi with that beautiful scroll. Uh, maitake, I just picked a giant maitake a few days ago. My gosh, that was just a sight to behold. But uh, maitake has a lot of interesting biological effects. It's especially known for, besides the, the usual biological effects of mushrooms, uh, the, the cholesterol regulating possibilities. And you can eat it and enjoy the medicine, get the cholesterol benefit. Um, for, for high, it's been studied for hypertension, bladder cancer, a hepatitis, and especially for regulating blood sugar. It's well known for, as a blood sugar regulator. One cl uh, controlled clinical trial, 71 months follow-up, 146 patients with bladder cancer. Um, the recurrence rate was 33% compared with 65 for controls. 33% with the, the act, uh, group getting the active um, Grifola frondosa extract.